important that we begin to change the mindset of young people to know that your vote counts. They don't understand that the legislative arm of government is actually a co-equal arm of government. We have an uh, incredible amount of potential. Whatever it is I was doing because of my personal DNA, it had to be of an international standard, which is what, seriously speaking, is all about. Hello, 20 years ago, when my guest on this show started what she does, which is handle people with disabilities through her center, there were very few such centers in Nigeria. Today, they are multiple and everywhere. Isn't it strange that if in every community, at least one out of every 10 people will have some form of disability or the other, why are disability issues still not quite on the front burner yet? Why are a lot of people still very ashamed to bring out their children or those members of their families that have disabilities? Why is it that when you ask people to give either of their time or their money to issues of disability, they would rather not do so? Or some people feel that I've given too much. Now, this guest, the first time I had her on a show several years ago, maybe about 16 years ago, it was, we actually literally pulled her to join us. But now, she's the one that's teaming up with Today's Woman, my magazine, to come up with what we've called the Triple C campaign, trying to get all of us to communicate better amongst each other and connect to that compassionate side of us. We'll be back in a short while with Seriously Speaking today, and we are talking compassion, love, harmony, and disability, and you. Welcome back to Seriously Speaking with Dr. Yinka Akindayomi. I'm not gonna spend time even describing her work, because if you Google her, you will find things about her. But I do know she's a doctor, she's the mother of a son who is over 30 and has lived with autism all his life. Of course, does it change? It's my no, guest. It my guest today is Yinka. It's nice to have you on set. Thank you. I must remind you about the first time I asked you to come on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and you said, I'm not about publicity. I don't want to do any of that. You know, you were just about taking care of kids. You know, why did you accept that first invitation that time to come on Today's Woman? Well, I think I began to think about my responsibility uh, to my nation, to mm -hmm. my society, and that I should prepare myself to get out there and spearhead what I needed to spearhead. So I had a little think about what you said <laughs> and then decided that, yeah, I need to do what I need to do and do it. If, if I'm going to do something like this, the best person to do it would, would be with Adeswa. <laughs> How nice. And anyway, we've, we've remained friends since then. But Akin, that's your son. Akin is 32 or 30? 31. 31 now. Yes. And do you still think he's going to get married? I still believe so. <laughs> so if there are any takers out there, I will, he's still there. He's still he's a kind of good, very, very handsome gorgeous. young man. Mm -hmm. And um, autism has not um, had the negative impact on him. So he's still out there. We're still out there. That's the thing about autism. You don't see it. You can tell. That, yeah. you know, because it just looks like you know, nothing's wrong with yeah. them. I think that is why it's one of the most devastating disabilities because it has this false presentation, presentation that everything is okay until the child is about two, three, then you begin to notice certain things and then it's, well, so to speak, in quotes, mm -hmm. downhill from there. Yeah, I find most mothers who've learned to live with it, who've come to terms with it, talking along the same lines as you were. But when 20 years ago you came back from England and said you wanted to start the centre, it wasn't easy, was it? No, it wasn't. And um, there were a lot of concerns. I remember I had um, an uncle who's a professor in Ibadan telling me that why Is he a medical you, professor? A medical professor mm -hmm. at uh, the UCH. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, why on earth would you want to get into this? that um, would this feed you? And I'm thinking, well, <laughs> uncle, I'm actually married, so my husband can feed me. But I was really, really, um, I wouldn't say desperate, but I had come to grips with myself, with my inner self, that this really was something I needed to do. And there was no stopping me. Here am I, 20 years on. Mm -hmm. So what was the aim of the center from get-go? And has it stayed the same? I think from the get-go, it was about children. Because you call it the Children's Development Center. Center, which is it's not only people with yeah. autism that you deal with. Yeah. Um, initially, the drive was 
to support families and children that had autism. That was the initial drive because that is what I knew. But I had to look back and think about the fact that I am a medical doctor and it's not just about autism. It is about children with developmental disabilities in general. And if you were to send people away because they didn't have autism, then what would that, how would that help any family? Did this turnaround happen after you started or before you started? I think it, it, it's it evolved. Evolved within, you know, it's all, almost like I started, everybody was bringing kids with autism and all of a sudden parents with um, children with Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, also came to the center and it was like, why would I send them away? Because they didn't have, their kids didn't have autism. Mm -hmm. So that's how I embraced everybody. That was a tough, I mean, that was a tough baggage to carry because you know, this is more than one developmental disability. And uh, some of the lessons in speaking with you that I think you've learned, you say to me things like, you know, I can't take everybody, right? So it's painful to have to tell people, listen, this thing costs money to do it. How have you managed that over the years? Well, my staff would tell you that um, actually I'm a big pain when it comes to money. It's not that money is not important. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure there are many people who have worked with me in the past and felt, well, they, I didn't pay very much. But having <laughs> said that, it's about my passion, about the compassion first and then the money. And once you have money, you know that, yes, you can do so many things and develop what you're doing. But it is about that compassionate component. What do we need to do to help people? What do we need to do to drive this issue forward? And a lot of the times, it's not just about the money. And I'll return in the second part of the show to initiate the Triple C campaign, which is one step further into ensuring that the impact of the work of CDC will be wider than before. Welcome back, still in the studios with Yinka, you know, and uh, with her lovely assets. I always describe them. <laughs> and your lovely assets. And um, your other kids, now you're a grandma, because, I mean, your first daughter is married and she has two little kids. You love being a grandma? I do, I do. I don't know how, whether they love having me as their grandma. No, why else do they want to come to your house every time? <laughs> <laughs> but they hardly see me. You know, it's like, grandma, you're too busy. Yeah, that's oh. the point. You're 60 in July. Yeah. You're still strong and going. You're still running the city yeah. after all these years. What would you say has kept it going, most of all? People's support? Has it waned? Has it grown? I'll tell you this. Um, recently, we had a little boy who came to the center. And um, he's quite severe. With which one now? Because you have... With cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. And cerebral palsy, for the viewers, is that this is more physical. And he's unable to sit down. He has very little neck control. And um, he, he had only been with us for three dates. But the jubilation from the family was that <gasps> he's sleeping, he's turning, he's... And it was like... Every little progress. Every little progress is what gets to my heart to move me on. And that has always been my motivation, that no matter what it is, even if the child has the best smile afterwards, after they've been to CDC, then so be it. But we've had a lot of successes. We've had many children uh, get back into mainstream school. They're even voting. Like yes. Some of the kids voted. Yeah, yes. Uh, adult children, mm -hmm. uh, for the first time ever, they were able to get their PVC, and um, some of them actually voted. And people were asking me that, how on earth can they vote? I said, well, you put this picture and this picture. Which one do you like? And that is voting. <laughs> no, but what did you do for the kids? I know they travel, they do all because like the kids have grown with your kid. Yes. At every point in time, when you saw something that you thought Akin should have, they would have it. Because you yeah. also came up with your Tea Breakers Club, for example, so they can be earning yeah. an income. Yeah, an income. Um, that is still a, a work in progress, mm -hmm. though. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, many years back now, because it's almost 10 years, the Tea Breakers, uh, we decided that the adults should mm -hmm. have something that they should do. So we looked around and said, well, people like to eat in Nigeria. And they <laughs> like meat pies and they like sausage rolls and cookies, snack things. And um, we were able to train about 15 of our students 
to actually put together the meat pies and by themselves, mm -hmm. put them in the oven, bake them, and bring them out. Mm -hmm. And then With we the sell them. So we're still doing that. Um, there's a lot for us to achieve, even with the catering. We also went into uh, scented candles as well. Mm -hmm. And the next thing is farming. So on our land that we had, mm -hmm. that... Um, You're you still know, trying to build your center. That's another issue. But we decided to have a certain section of the land to actually grow food. Because in Nigeria today, um, agriculture is the next big thing. Mm. So it's no longer oils per se, mm. but agriculture. And we are going to get into agriculture as well. Now, you started 20 years ago. Since then, there are all kinds of, there are several more people who are talking disability. Some people are focused on one area and the other. Did you ever have a, a situation where you felt, uh -uh, me that I came since, they are forgetting me. They are only thinking about these ones, like envy. Did they ever come about? I never had envy. Um, I had concerns initially because we were talking about just one disability. And I felt that that shouldn't confuse the community because nowadays, every child that has a disability, they'll say, oh, that's autism, whereas it's not autism. So there's a bit of confusion within our community. But that is my joy and that is my pride that I opened the doors for so many people to walk through it. So we've done a lot of hard work. We're still doing a lot of hard work to pave the way. So why be jealous of that? That is success in itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for your patience, you for waiting through all of this. We'll see you again next week on Seriously Speaking. Bye.